This segment is an introduction to polynomials. First of all, I'd like to describe or define for you something that's called a monomial. Mono meaning one. Um, poly meaning many. Um, so watch those prefixes. A monomial is an algebraic expression of the type a coefficient times a variable raised to a power where that coefficient a is just a real number and n is not negative. It's always a positive value. An example of a monomial is 2x cubed. Notice the power here is a positive value. So the cool thing is that we won't be using any negative exponents. Another example of a monomial, a coefficient times a variable raised to a power. Even another example, a negative 7. It kind of has an x to the 0 power next to it because x to the 0 is equal to 1. Something that is not a monomial is something like this. 3x to the negative 4 power. We will not be raising that to a negative power. Or um, 2 over x cubed because when you move the variable up into the numerator, you have that as 2x to the negative 3. That is not a monomial. What we do then is we put um, several terms that are monomials together and we call them polynomials, sometimes having special names. So, for example, I'm going to put a few up here now just so you can see an illustration of them. I might have a polynomial that is called 3x plus 4. So this is a monomial, 3x. So is that. There are two monomial terms in this polynomial separated by this plus sign. Plus sign. We often call this one a binomial. Um, if we put three terms in a polynomial, 5x squared plus 7x minus 9, here's a term, here's a term, and there's a term, we often call that one a trinomial because it has three terms in it. And after that, if there's more than three, we'll call it a polynomial. And actually for any of these, they're called polynomials. An example of that might be a negative 6x to the fourth power plus 3x squared minus 7x plus 11. I would like you to notice that when we write polynomials, we tend to write them in descending order of the exponent. So would you please notice that this term right here has a 4 for an exponent, and that is the largest. This term right here has a 2. That's the second largest. This one has an exponent that's understood to be a 1. And if you wanted to, you could tack an x to the 0 on that one, and that's the smallest degree. So I don't tend to write, tend to write those. Um, so we should write it in descending order. I'd like you to notice that the coefficient of this particular term is a negative 6. The coefficient of this particular term is a positive 3. The coefficient of this particular term is a negative 7. And even this one, the coefficient is 11, again, because it has x to the 0 after it, which is equal to 1. So notice what the coefficients are. Um, the degree of each term, the degree of this term right here is 4. The degree of this term is 2. The degree of this term is a 1. So as you can see, it's the exponent on the variable. And the degree of that term is 0. And finally, the degree of this overall polynomial is just the highest degree on any one term. So the degree of the polynomial for this one is 4 because the highest um, exponent is that on that 6x to the 4th power. Again, please remember that you should rewrite polynomials in descending order. I'd like to now just collect some like terms. So let's say that you have um, 3x minus 7x. Now all I want you to recognize is what like terms are. So if they have the same variable raised to the same power, then you can add or subtract their coefficients. So this coefficient is 3. That one's a minus 7. 3 minus 7 is a negative 4. So when you collect these two, you will have a negative 4x. The next example, um, 2x squared 
plus 8x squared. These two are like terms as well because the variable is the same and it's raised to the same power. So we have two of these and eight of these for a total of 10 of those. Don't do anything with the variable raised to the power. You are just adding or subtracting their coefficients. Another one looks like this. And when I do not put a coefficient, it means that it's understood to be a 1. So when I combine these coefficients, 1 minus 9 is a negative 8 of those x's. And I've collected my like terms. I'm going to erase these and put a couple more up. Um, let's go with 6x to the 4th minus 2x to the 4th plus 5. And I want to collect my like terms. This one and this one are called like terms. I take their coefficients and subtract them. So 6 minus 2 is 4 of those x to the 4th. And I bring down my plus 5. And I'm all done. I've collected my like terms. Um, let's go with one that's got more exponents. So I've got a negative 1 plus 5x cubed minus 3 minus 7x cubed plus x to the 4th plus 5. I like to focus on putting this in descending order of the exponent while I'm collecting like terms. So I look for the terms with the greatest exponent. That would be this one. And there's only one of those. There's nothing to be collected. So I'm going to write that down first. So I have x to the fourth. This one and this one are like terms. The variable is raised to the same power. And in descending order, I'm working after x to the fourth, I'm working on the x to the third term next. So I have to take their coefficients of a positive 5 and subtract 7. So 5 minus 7 is a negative 2 of those x cubes. I'm going to look for an x squared term next. I don't see it. I'm going to look for an x term next. It's not there as well. And finally, I have constants of a negative 1 and a negative 3 that have to be added to be a negative 4. And then when I add 5 to that, I get a positive 1. And I'm all done. And I put this also in descending order of the variable at the same time. Let's take one that involves some fractions. And so, I have um, 2x minus 5, 6 plus 4x cubed plus x plus 1 third minus 2x. And I'd like to collect my like terms. This one is the one with the highest degree. I'm going to put that one down first. So I have 4x cubed. I don't think I have any x squared terms. So I'm going to go to my x terms next. And I'm going to work from left to right. However, if you happen to know that this positive 2x and that minus 2x add to be 0, and then you have just that 1x left, that's fine. But if you work from left to right, 2x plus 1x is 3x. And then take away 2x, you're still left with 1x. Be careful about putting a 1 into the computer. Sometimes it doesn't understand it. It is not necessary to have this 1 here when the coefficient is 1. So it's just plus x. And then I've got to take this minus 5, 6 and add the 1 third to it. So I need a common denominator of 6. So I'm going to multiply that fraction by 2 over 2. So I have a negative 5, 6 plus 2, 6, which adds to be a negative 3 over 6 which is a negative one-half. You can write that as minus one-half or plus a negative one-half. It doesn't matter. This is my introduction to, to polynomials. Remember, we start with monomials and we put them together to create a polynomial, sometimes binomials, trinomials. And you can only collect terms where the variable is the same and the power it is raised to is the same as well. And then you will add or subtract their coefficients.